Hi, I'm DJ Pyro Bob Bebe, Springfield, Illinois, and this is a uh, tutorial for new users to VDMX. If you uh, if you don't have VDMX yet, download it. It's free. You get that on uh, VidVox's website. It's a great program. If you've got an APC40 or an APC20, maybe you're an Ableton user, or maybe you bought one trying to do Ableton and gave up. This is a great way to put that MIDI controller to use. Uh, there's a lot of fun ways you can uh, you can set that controller up. This program is very customizable, so much so that it's intimidating right at the start here. If you notice, there's a lot of different setups in these templates, and this is called Simple Player, and it doesn't even really look simple to me. Um, here we go, Simple Mixer. That doesn't look very simple, but um, we're going to start with the. Uh, let's start with an absolute, a new, a new blank. And uh, it's, it starts us here with a uh, media bin. We got a UI inspector and a workspace inspector. Workspace inspector. This is your corporate headquarters. This is your home base. This is this is it. You got a few tabs up here at the top. We're going to focus on layers and plugins. A layer, think about it as a sheet of paper, a layer. That's that's your video. Think about it as a deck, like deck A, deck B, layer 1, layer 2. A layer is is one video. Okay? Our media bin is where you put all your your movies in, all your junk. So I'm going to uh, make my media bin a little bigger and uh, you can just click and drag off your desktop uh, whatever videos you want to add I like, uh, let's see I have a pretty good reel of uh, videos here go ahead and click and drag and I'll start them pretty much at the front okay some of my windows disappear and then as I click back on the BDMX tab then the rest of them will show up here all right, so now I have media bin one, and I have a layer one already. If you don't have a layer one, just add one. Now you notice your layer one is going to have three windows: source, an FX, and a composition. And we'll get to those in a minute. But what I want you to do is click this button here in the corner, and that'll move them out into loose mode, is what I'll call it. Then you can you can set those permanently up so you can see them and and change them. Uh, you're going to want to do something with, especially with your effects, and you're going to do something at least with your composition in some videos, and uh, and your source. So we're going to we're going to put those out here, and we're going to mess with those in a little bit. Okay. So we've got our media bin. We've got our, we've got layer. We've got one layer, which is all we can select here, and we'll go ahead and click on a video, and with all that luck, it's showing down here in our window. Now here's something quick right off the bat. Command F brings up your full screen. If you don't have a window down there, click window and that will make one pop up if you want. If you have a second monitor, click full screen and you can make one of those monitors your full screen. And that's going to be essentially how you use VDMX to output to a projector or to a, a TV or whatever you want. Now let me show you just a, a real quick tip for Apple users. Uh, people that use Mavericks. Whenever I tried to change, see I'm using my Sony right now in 1080i and it shows only 720p right here. Here's the secret. You hold option and then click scaled and then it shows the rest of your available resolutions. And the reason I show you this is sometimes you're going to want to dumb your your uh, signal down depending on your video card so, so you don't have as much lag in your video depending on the quality of video you have. Um, if you're getting lagged, then try knocking it down to a lower resolution. You'll find that, um, especially if it's from a, a crowd standing at a little bit of a distance, or if you got some other lights going on, lowering that resolution is going to speed your machine up a lot, and you're not going to really miss out on much of an effect. So uh, there's just a little quick uh, tip: hold that Option key to give you those uh, those options there in uh, Mavericks. So now I'm, I'm not going to use a full screen right now, but there's that. So now I've got a clip going and I can uh, select another clip if I want. Now, there's, there's different types of clips. 
This, this is a movie clip. Now, if I look down here in my source, I can pause that movie, or I can, there's a rate, it's playing at 1, which is 100%. I can knock it down to 0 0.5, which you guess is about 50%, as, as in half as fast. I definitely want to mute the audio because I'm using other audio. I'm just using VDMX for my video. But maybe you want it to go um, backwards. It's going to play backwards. Or maybe you want it to, uh, to do go forward and backwards. You can change it to reversing loop. Now, some of these other videos I have up here, it's not necessarily a video file. It's called a quartz composer file. And this is going to allow me to change the scale Z watch the as I do that you can see it's getting kind of closer to the camera and then f and getting thinner there quartz composer is a really cool it's a free Apple developer program um, that I'm gonna get into on a totally different videos on a different day but some of these quartz composers you can it allows you to input the color and change that live you can't do that with other types of files, you know. Course Composer files are really cool. So uh, that's one thing that I really want to share with you guys later. That's one thing that really drew me in um, as a, a person new to VJing was Course Composer. And, and that's what's motivated me to make some of these tutorial videos is there's not a lot of them out there. So um, I'll be helping you guys with that later. But for now, we've got a, we got us a clip going in layer one. Um, and if we want to, let's say we can add an effect. Let's say we'll add a blur, box blur. And we can change this blur. You can see it getting more blurry as I move my mouse here. Now maybe I want this blur to turn off and on. You can just click it right there. But maybe you want to assign that to a keyboard like the T key. All you have to do is right click push detect all and then any the next thing that you push is going to be assigned to that button so I'll push the T and there it goes off and on so that's how you can set up your MIDI controller as well as your keyboard to do a lot of quick things that are going to later allow you to work with this program as more of an art form rather than a lot this is a lot of setup and window moving and clicking of the mouse once you get this right let's say I want to read this red I want it to be on a slider I could detect all and move this slider that's going to allow me to interact with this with my uh, with my MIDI controller rather than the mouse and that's going to be more natural whenever you're using this program in, in uh, real world applications so over here we've got our one layer we're going to go to our plugins we've got a clock one right now it's at 120 beats per minute we can speed that up by uh, we can enter in a manual amount or you can multiply it by two real quick or you can tap it out what I like to do is on the APC 40 and 20 there should be a tap so you detect all and then click tap or maybe uh, the space bar is a good tap or maybe the tab key and that way at any time you can quickly just tap out your tempo and um, get it to match with the beat of the music. Another button that's it's really good to use is this start over button. It starts it at the beginning. Starts your clock over. Now right now we got a clock sitting right here and it's not really doing anything. It's, it's keeping our time but we're not using it for anything. It's like having a VCR playing a tape but it's not plugged into a TV. These are called plugins for a reason. Our media bin we have media in it, so it's and we're using it to, to to trigger cues on layer one. We're not using this clock yet, but let's say we go to our sailboat here, and it's it's this long. Maybe we'll detect a data source. We'll use that clock, and where the measure position is, which is right here, one, two, three, four. We're going to use that for our time. So then, as this video goes it goes with that measure position so as our and it's going a little bit quick so let's just use the middle part of it now see how it's kind of it's choppy and it's because I'm using a, it's probably a little bit of a too much video for my computer uh, my computer runs these quartz composer patches really good but uh, not necessarily the regular videos as well but 
you can see here we've hooked up that time clock to this to this right here and it's given us a little bit of a it's given us that the movement to the music that we want that's the point of this of this VDMX here is we're trying to make this video go with the music so it's a it's appealing visual and it kind of brings your sound alive so there's one way to tie your your clock into the motion here let's say you don't like that anymore it's making it too choppy we're going to disable all data sources and just let it travel on its own back and forth we'll just make it go uh, loop so there we go make it go forward okay so we've still got our clock here and uh, let's let's just detect this to the the A key so we can kinda start over at any time now instead of using this clock directly on one of these layers let's use the let's use the clock to affect an LFO an LFO is a plugin. It's called a low frequency oscillator, but for in layman's terms, it's basically a random number generator. It's got these math waves that are calculating numbers, and you can you can you can change them if you want using the uh, UI inspector. But in in general, it's already moving. You got motion on there. What you want to do is let's let's this time, let's connect that to the clock. So now this LFO is going to go with the measure position. So now as, let's click on our clock. Our clock is up here until we move it. Let's say we want to see our clock all the time. We'll make it into our small window and then put it over here so we can watch our clock. Now as you see, boom, right as this goes, it starts to restart right here. So as I speed the clock up, this is going to speed up. And as I speed the clock down, this is going to slow down. So now I have these random numbers that are generating. This is going to start high and go low. And this is the, uh, let's see, waveform. This is the cosine. This one is the uh, sine. And you can change those, and you can, you can change the uh, numbers there to make them different. It starts out fine. You don't have to mess with it. So now we know this particular wave is the cosine. Let's go to one of these patches that allows me to uh, in input a little bit of information here, and we'll uh, use a data source. We'll use the LFO one. We'll use that cosine. So it's going to start off high, and then drop with this, which is pretty neat. And it, it adds a little bit of fluid motion, but it's a little bit too much. So we're going to bring up the minimum, and bring down the maximum. So it's it's not getting. Let's see, get pretty low without messing with us. So now it's uh, it's kind of it's getting flat but it's it's pumping up a little bit so that's kind of neat. So um, and uh, yeah that looks pretty cool. It's moving and it's going with the uh, it's going with the rate of the clock here and that's our goal. Our goal is to to plug these things into each other. So now let's let's do a little bit of housekeeping. This LFO, it's giving us info, but we really don't need to see it. Just for the sake of keeping it on the screen, we'll shrink it down and we'll put it over here. Same with this clock. I don't need to see it all the time, so I'm going to take it and put it behind this LFO. Keep my workspace clean here. So there we go. We've got We've got an LFO going. We've got it affecting this video a little bit, and um, we've got one layer. But a lot of just like when you mix audio, you want to mix video seamlessly. You want to select your next video and then fade into it. So in order to do that in VDMX, it's very simple. You just go to layer, and just like I said, layer one is kind of like deck A. Add a, add a deck B. You can have four if you want. Let's use two. Now you see. Layer 1's are all right here. Layer 2's are now below right here. What you need to do is click there, Layer 2 Composition, and then drag this little window behind the Layer 1 Composition. So you can stack these windows and keep your workspace clean. Layer 2 Source, I'm going to grab this tab. There's the Layer 1 Source. Put it behind it. There's the Layer 2 Effects. Put it behind there. And then what we're going to do is now we have two layers 
we can go over here to plugins and add a two channel mixer. We'll call it a crossfader. I'm going to change the name to crossfader. TCM always, two, TCM two channel mixer, that always confuses me. And I'll spend all day looking for a crossfader. So I'll beef it up. You don't need it so big. But then you can uh, you can basically go up here into layer one, cue up a video, go to layer two, cue up a video. There they are, they're stacked because it's in the middle. But they're well, it's not doing anything. The crossfader is a plug-in, but you have to plug something into it. So I've go down here and select layer one and layer two. And now it'll allow me to fade between the two. There's all in layer one, there's both, and then there's two. So then that allows you to switch between your two layers and then fade back just like you do when you're DJing audio. But see how I'm having to click up here all the time? Let's not have to do that all the time. I want to be able to push one on the keypad or a button on my MIDI controller to change between these layers. So what you got to do is you go to Window, UI Inspector, or Mine's popped up already, and here's layer one and layer two. Just detect, and I push one, go to two, detect, and then push two. And now if I push one, push two, it changes between those. So I'm in layer one right now. I'm going to collect layer two, select a video, and then I'm going to crossfade all the way, halfway, and then on over. And then I'll click layer one. It's going to switch me up there. I'll select a video. Nothing happens down here because we're showing layer two right now. But as I drag back, that's what's going to show up is my new video on layer one. So there's my introductory video. Um, definitely, definitely check out my next video on the APC 40 and uh, using that. There's a lot of different helps. This does come with an APC 20 example but the uh, the there's a lot of really quick upgrades that I show you on that uh, video thanks for uh, thanks for watching I'm Pyro Bob baby